We've been talking today about standing in the gap for ourselves. That is, as we build our wall of faith that protects our spiritual selves. As we're building that wall, there will be cracks, there will be defects, there will be problems, and we need to be able to stand in the gap continually to work on those things. And we talked about that this morning. Tonight, we're going to deal with one aspect of those things. One aspect that bothers probably every one of us from time to time. There are so many people who struggle with a concept that says, how do I forgive myself? Nobody knows how bad you are. Nobody knows how bad I am except us individually. Oh, there are people that know things about our lives. There are people who might see some chinks in the armor. There might be some people who say, well, I see something you could work on, but there is nobody who knows you like you do, not in this world. And we struggle. We have problems. And when we look at ourselves, we see who we really are. Sometimes it's difficult to say to the mirror, I forgive you. So, let me first set the tone this way. For any of us who struggle from time to time forgiving ourselves, let me ask that we ask these questions of ourselves. Okay? Here are some questions that will help us come to an understanding of our situation. Here are some things that I should ask. Number one, do I trust God? And you let that sink in for a minute. Do I trust God? Do I take God at His word? Do I accept Him? Am I willing to stand before anyone and say, without reservation, I trust God? Number two, has God promised to forgive me? If the answer to the first question is yes, I trust God, and God says, I have forgiven you, then now let's ask another question. Have I repented? Because God says, if you confess your sin, I will forgive, 1 John 1 and verse 9. So now, if my first answer was yes, I trust God. Therefore, I take him at his word that he forgives and I have repented then ask question number four. What is repentance? Well, we always give the standard definition of repentance. Repentance is about face. The Greek word means with the mind. Metanoeo. With your mind. You make a choice, you make a change, you make a difference. And so, if I understand that repentance is that I make a change, then I ask myself, have I made a change? Then comes the most difficult question 
that probably produces the reason to have a discussion about this. Does my repeated offense mean that I never did repent? I believe this, I've said it many times, I think everybody in this room, everybody online, everybody you meet who is trying to serve God, I think every one of us struggles constantly with something. I'm not a big fan of a public prayer that says, Lord, forgive us because we know we sin every day. Well, stop it. I think it is possible to go an hour or two without sinning. You probably have. I think it is possible to go an entire day without sinning. I think you probably have. But it is impossible for me to stop for the rest of my life ever sinning again. The odds are just stacked against us. And if we ever did get to that point, that wouldn't change scripture, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God because we already have, whether we ever do again. But the truth of the matter is we're going to. In fact, that's what John said in 1 John chapter 2. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth's not in us. Listen to what he said. If we deceive ourselves... By saying, we have no sin. That was John, the writer of the epistle, who said he put himself in the category of someone who had sin. Do I think he was rebellious? Certainly not. But I think he struggled. And I think you struggle. And I know I struggle. So does Repeated sin mean that I never did repent? I am so glad that God looks at our hearts. David said, Lord, look at my heart and know that I am right While each one of us struggles and each one of us sins, I think it is highly likely that all of us have hearts not to sin. Our hearts are not set on, what is the next thing that I can do? What is the next high? What is the next great feeling? What is the next? We're not set on that. And I think God knows our heart. And if we repent, God forgives because he promised he would and I can trust him. But how can we do it practically? Look at this text in 1 Timothy chapter 1, starting at verse 12. Let's notice a few things that Paul said practically practically speaking, that we can do to know that we are forgiven. One, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me. How can I know or how can I forgive myself? Number one, don't try to do it yourself. Don't think that somehow we have the ability, some vast ability, just to get over it. God is the one who enables. God is the one who provides the power. 
to do whatever we're trying to do, whatever He wants us to do. He is the one. Paul said, I count on God. Give Him the credit. As I struggle, and as we think about that, give Him the credit for moving farther away from where you don't want to be. Number two, look at verse 13. Look what Paul said about himself. I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man. I know what Paul was, and he came clean. He said, here is who I was. But Paul is also the one who said in Romans chapter 7, the things that I want to do, I don't do. And the things that I don't want to do, I do. So if I do the things I don't want to do, if I don't do the things that I want to do, what is that? It's sin that's in my life. Not because we welcome it, not because we cater to it, not because we want it there, but because we're human. So just come clean. This is my problem. Number three, accept God's grace and mercy. Notice what Paul said. I obtained Mercy. Look at verse 14. The grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant. Look at verse 16. For this reason I obtained mercy. God wants to forgive. And if He wants to forgive, then He wants me to forgive me. Accept His grace and mercy. How can we say, God has forgiven me, but then I not forgive myself? Doesn't that somehow say that to God, I'm not really trusting in you? I don't really take you at your word? Notice again, Verse 15, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief, Paul said. Accept the fact in your mind and in your heart and say it if you need to. God offered me forgiveness before I ever ask Him for it. That's pretty powerful. God said, I want to forgive you even when I was willfully against Him. Even when I was not trying. Even when I was failing. God said, I want to forgive you. If He wants to forgive me, should I not want to forgive myself? I can forgive myself. Number four or five, whatever number I'm on, I have no idea right now, but here it is. Look at verse 16 at the end. That in me, Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on Him for everlasting life. Had you ever thought that forgiving yourself can be a ministry to others? Somebody's watching. And if they know that you struggled and now they can see you moving past it, don't you think it helps them? If I can help somebody else by forgiving myself, it'll make it easier for me to forgive me. 
But I want to go back to verse 12 to close it out. Because in one verse, Paul talked about the beginning and the end. I thank Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has enabled me. That's the beginning. It's all God. It's not me without him. Because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Finally, if you're trying to forgive yourself for something, get busy in ministry. Have you noticed how much easier it is to have bad thoughts or to commit sin when you're at work or when you're on a team or when you're out there compared to how much easier it is not to sin when you are here? I do find it fascinating. I have in the past heard it. The opening prayer, someone says, forgive us of our sins. Somebody leads prayer at the Lord's Supper and says, Lord, forgive us of our sins. And we have to close with prayer. And so we pray again, and God, forgive us of our sins. And I'm thinking, how much sinning is going on in worship? <laughs> it's not about saying, we've been sinning for this hour. It's about that nagging thought. And I think I left out one. If you've got the outline, you know it. Don't play the scales game. That's what we're doing. I'll feel forgiven if my good deeds outweigh my bad deeds. That's what we're thinking. And when somebody in a worship time Ask for forgiveness at the beginning, the middle, and the end. It is an indication that we just hold on to something and we just can't get rid of it. So get busy. If you're busy serving the Lord, it's a whole lot less likely that you're going to sin. In the middle of activities and work for the Lord... It's the farthest thing from your mind. But in those times when we are idle, an idle mind, an idle life invites so much more possibility. I think I can forgive myself. I think you can forgive yourself because we trust God. And he wants to forgive us, so he wants us to forgive us. And in so doing, we'll be standing in the gap for ourselves to be better in the sight of God. The best thing you can do to forgive yourself is to be obedient to the Lord in baptism if you've not been. The best thing you can do if you are a child of God who sins is to say... I'm a sinner. Will you help me? I want you to pray for me. I want you to work on my behalf. Tonight, if any of that is your need, we're here as we stand together.